Good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm going to be discussing a project that has been running for two years now at the University of Coimbra. It's a student-led initiative that uses a peer coaching approach, student-to-student -student learning, and uh, focuses on the Arduino platform to expose students uh, to, we could say, microcontroller programming at the early stages. We are always talking about high school students. So, uh, the idea actually comes from uh, two students at the University of Coimbra, Maria Joao Lopez and Maria Margarida Lima da Silva, and their supervisor, uh, Professor Manuela Ramos Silva, and Anne Pablo Martin from the University of so, uh, I would like to start by commenting on what's G-Knowledge and why we should go for Arduino-based learning. So, G-Knowledge uh, stands for Junior Empresa da Facultad de Ciencias y Tecnologías de Universidad de Coimbra. Uh, as I said, it's a student-led initiative that started eight years ago, and they have, uh, we could say, that internal and external projects, but in all cases, they are aimed at offering the students from the University of Coimbra the possibility of applying what they learn in their degrees to the real world. So, they work mostly, I would say, as a startup incubator, but they also have other activities, like, for example, the G Knowledge Academy that I'm discussing today. Uh, and the goal of this G Knowledge Academy is to actively engage students into science, technology, engineering, and maths education through that student-to-student -student based approach. So, uh, the idea of why are we supposed to teach uh, basic microcontrollers at these early stages? The answer actually came from Steve Jobs. I mean, everyone should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. So, by exposing students to this microcontroller programming, we are teaching them how to develop their problem solving skills and also we are leading them to ideation, innovation and energy awareness, just to name a few. So, uh, between the, well, we could say there are several uh, platforms to teach uh, this kind of microcontroller programming, but a few of them are open source. Uh, and one of the most popular ones is Arduino. I mean, another excellent uh, alternative would come from MIT, but we will focus only on, on this one. Uh, why? Because it's very easy to program both in assembly language and in high level languages. It's easy uh, to program it also using graphical systems. I will comment on that later on. We can use it for project based learning. And it's very cheap. I mean, we are talking of something that is cheaper than $3 uh, in most cases. What they learn, they can use it later on in their degrees. And here's the key. They don't need to know anything about programming or robotics. They just need the willingness to learn. That's it. So, the philosophy can be summarized in this uh, sentence by Massimo Banzi, who was the co-founder of Arduino, who says that you don't need anyone's permission to create something great. And in the same line, Michael Silo uh, was saying that it's like cooking. I mean, you don't need to be a chef in order to cook something. Everyone knows how to cook something. So the idea is that you don't need to be a computer engineer in order to program something nice with an algorithm. A hobbyist, or we could say an amateur, can do it easily. So, in case we needed more reasons, uh, well, just uh, take into consideration that we don't need to go in depth into the how to program aspect. I mean, we can perfectly disregarded part, and students will be able to get their projects done. Uh, the implementation is basically C or C++. There are many graphical languages, which means that even seven or zero, uh, eight year old students <coughs> will be able to program, because it works like if they were playing with Legos. They put their blocks together, and the code runs. Adding uh, peripherals is not difficult. I mean, it's just putting them on top of the Arduino board. And there are many, and when I say many, I mean thousands of tutorials online and a huge user database. And all these people are always willing to lend a helping hand in case we have doubts. So we can say that it's a great start for creating interactive objects or environments. As regards uh, methodology, uh, I said that we have a, a 
student to student uh, approach, basically peer coaching. And on the one hand, we would have university students, second to fourth year uh, students that came from the physics engineering and the design and multimedia degrees at the University of Coimbra, but also high school students. In this second edition, there were 18 students uh, aged 14 to 17. They conducted a seven hour seminar split into two sessions on two separate days, and the students had to pay a small attendance fee, not to make any profit, but in order to buy the kits that they would take with them home once they were done with the seminar, so they could have their own RP. We bought uh, these kits uh, that are Funduino ones, uh, they are $20 ones, and they came not only with the Arduino, uh, or in this case a Funduino clone a board, but also uh, they have different sensors, uh, they have a motor, uh, they have different displays, even a joystick or a remote control. So it's a quite a nice kit that you can use to build easily 50 or 60 different projects. Of course, there are other options available. I mean, starting from the official kit, which would be around 70 euros, let's say. We have the Vilros, the Sun Thunder, the DF Robot, a RDX, many options and many different prices. But if we are tight on budget, we can buy clones for less than three dollars. I mean, from the internet. Then we would need to add all the components. But for three dollars, you can have the Arduino board. The way of organizing the course, uh, we had a theoretical introduction plus several hands-on sessions. In the theoretical section, they would cover basically the philosophy of open source hardware, uh, how the Arduino was created, the different models, the characteristics and they would use uh, the documentary which is available under Creative Commons license. Then they would go into the basic, very basic concepts of Arduino programming, variables, functions, and some structures, without going into memory mapping, peripheral, interfacing, or anything that could uh, overwhelm the students so that they could feel uh, some fear of starting to work on this. And then they moved into the practical section of the course. They had first uh, an installation, a uh, guided installation in the student laptops of the computer program, which is free to use and that can transfer the code into the Arduino. And then they started with several mini projects. Six, uh, six tiny projects plus a larger project of their choice. So the very basic thing, LED cluster, turning on and off LED, the RGB LED, which is basically an excuse to teach them about the additive uh, theory of color. Then dimming a lab, in which they would learn uh, basically about pulse width modulation and frequency. Turning on an, uh, an overlay with a photoresistor, it's another excuse to learn control structures. Button control lab will teach them about interruptions. And finally, the seven segments display is a good reason to learn how to use functions. So, after these six new projects, uh, they would choose one out of the 50 or 50 something projects that we had in mind. And, uh, well, uh, can we play the video, please? Well, we will skip it. Uh, it's just a video in which uh, the LEDs are turning on and off. It's a very basic project, and when it focuses on the computer, you will see that it's just. 10 lines of code, extremely easy. But they would work on several other stuff, and for example, one of the students uh, ended up preparing a small weather station, which had a real time clock, uh, a data logger, which was in this case an SD card, several sensors, a screen, and that in a seven hour seminar. I mean, the, the curve, the learning curve is extremely uh, steep with it. Follow up. This didn't end with the face-to-face -face sessions. They also had a, a blog uh, in which they kept posting more tutorials and in which the students could contribute and comment on what the others were working on. And in fact, it was so successful that they have included it in the first year syllabus of the physics engineering degree uh, in uh, the University of Coimbra. Just a uh, some of the outcomes, uh, from this is a quote from one of the students, who said that it actually helped him, I mean, taking this seminar, to decide that he wanted to pursue an engineering degree in the future. 
and that this approach is much more interactive than regular classes. And, for example, this other student uh, placed emphasis on the importance of the student-to-student student approach, which is key to the success of these sort of initiatives. Why? Because they are able to communicate more easily with these university level students because of the smaller age difference. They feel more relaxed and they consider that the university level students would understand them better than the regular faculty members. So, just in terms of conclusions, we can talk of success. I mean, just one dropout in two years, the young students were actually engaged and motivated to increase the difficulty step by step. They had a feeling of achievement. In fact, I mean, one of them decided that wanted to pursue an STM education just because of the seminar. And it's clear that there are huge advantages of peer coaching. So, uh, future plans. We could say that uh, on the third edition, we are planning to include a competition amongst different groups. So they will divide into two or three teams, and they will have a week after the seminar to work on a project, and there will be a prize, but that's still a surprise. And thank you very much for your attention.